Hi guys, I'm Arise. Welcome to another episode of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up a bit. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions behind their successful brands. Our guest today is JJ Omojua. He's the chief strategist at Alpha Reach. He's a political commentator on Twitter, a cultural influencer, and a voice for a millennial generation of Africans, especially when it comes to politics. Stay tuned. Hi, Omodua. Hello, Arisa. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on The Bridge. My pleasure. We're super excited to have you. The pleasure is mine, always. So the show is basically about looking at the business models behind business leaders like yourself and celebrities and basically trying to get the audience to understand how your brand became successful and more importantly, profitable. So you're the chief strategist at Alpha Reach. You're a cultural phenomenon. You basically can be described as the voice of millennials during the political season. Um, how did you go from tweeting and blogging to being able to monetize this, you know, movement that you created? I just paid attention to models. I realized that at the point I had finished from university, I had become quite famous relatively at that point in time okay. on, on Twitter. Twitter was supposed to help feed into my blog, mm. but eventually, as of 2012, I realized that Twitter could actually stand on its by own. itself. And Someone said to send my CV over to, for me to get a job. And at about the same time, I also got an email for a Twitter campaign. And the amount looked like, <laughs> even if they were going to pay me well for that job, the yeah. amount looked like something I couldn't get in three months. Mm. So I was like, okay, if, if this is coming for one deal, and even then I knew that I had not started, like yeah. I feel like, like I still feel even like now. Like you haven't even I was begun. like, man, then that means there's something here. So I just developed something around it and we're here now, still growing. Okay, so I want us to delve a little bit deeper. Twitter, as we said, is like your number one, like social media platform. Lots of people tweet, like millennials, this is our job. We're always on Twitter, on Instagram, saying our opinions, but not everyone's opinions or passions have been monetized but you've been able to monetize yours so talk to us about how you um, created those streams of income so i'm the next omodua i want to become a political commentator like omodua i want to talk about football and i want to get paid for it right how do i create the streams of income who pays me so the thing is you can't want to become a political commentator because there's no money in that. <laughs> you should seek to be a voice, okay. a cultural influencer. So you should be able to lead conversations around the industry that you want to make the money from. Mm -hmm. So if I were starting out today and I want to make money from people that sell sh fashionistas, mm -hmm. the fashion industry, clothes, um, peg, headgear, whatever, mm -hmm. then my voice would be around that aspect. Okay. What am I going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about fashion faux pas, things you shouldn't do, do. things you should do what to wear at night, how not to wear something shiny when you're dressed in <laughs> shiny. My voice, I, and then I also make sure that people are doing it, so I have to do it in a different, different way, way, one. And then I have to also find a way to say what people are not saying. I think those are two of the two most things. important things for yeah. conversations. If I'm going to say what others are saying, then I have then to say you, it in a way that I'm being heard differently. And if I'm going to say, if I'm not going to do that, then I have to say something that is very, very refreshing then you get a following and a trust and a believability. Mm. When you have all of those cap capital values, following, trust, believability, reach, yeah. then that's when a fashion label can look at you and say, can you help us like push <laughs> this yes. thing? And then there are two major kinds of people in terms of pushing. There are those that are like strictly marketers. So mm. every morning, every night, every day, they're just selling. I think that's not sustainable mm. because what happens is that you become a seller. People come to your time. People feel and like they're always selling. Yeah. So how I conquered that was to raise the bar on engagement. And how do you raise the bar on engagement? Increase how much it costs to, to engage me, which helps to reduce the number of organizations Patients and companies that, that were reaching out to me. So that also helped me to retain 
my voice. So mm. I still sell in a very, very subtle way, um, very coded way. I could just, you know, hold a pen, make it look like I'm just holding the pen. Meanwhile, I'm just like exposing because it's, it's all about exposure. Mm. And then I also try to extend myself beyond social media so that the brand is strengthened not just by digital, it's mm. also strengthened by physical. So a lot of your a lot of your income streams um, creating this brand around yourself has come from um, creating brand campaigns for bigger Copy brands who are willing to pay you for it. Mm -hmm. So that's one income stream. You're an international speaker. By God's grace. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you fly to different places around the world and you get paid to speak. So people are basically paying you for your opinions. Yeah. Yeah. My I expertise love on issues. I love it. Um, and then what's another income stream? Would you say sometimes appearances? Okay. Um, to so like some some company has opened, they want me to come and visit. Mm. But of course, when I come and visit, they're like, we're going to take pictures. Yeah. I'm going to post those pictures online. They are going to post it. Um, I get paid for such an appearance, mm -hmm. even though it's it's going to look like very very organic, like it was just my interest <laughs> in, in their company. Sometimes it's just for me to come to an mm. event and ask a question. Sometimes it's come to come to an event and tweet from that event. Sometimes it's for me to send someone so coverage. To that coverage. So someone has like a political event that they want a lot of young people to tune into. They'll call on Majora because yes. they know that except, he has to follow. Yes, except if I was already going to be there. Yeah. But sometimes you pay for that appearance, mm. and sometimes it's not even. It could be like a cultural event for for young people. Mm. But what I've also done is to extend myself. I've created other platforms. Mm. I started out with my personal brand. Then I now created other platforms that mm. are not in my name. So mm. if you don't like my face and you don't want <laughs> to read fine. from me, there are other places that you are reading that are from me mm -hmm. that you don't know. But without your personal brand, I'm not I'm not even there. You won't even see me there. When you're even paying <laughs> to that company, you're not going to see my name. You're not going to see my major um, company extension, which is Alpha Rich. I've just tried that's to very, spread very, the risk across. I think that's a very, very important point because when you're a personal brand, like people can like you or hate you, and sometimes your money um, depends on that. But let's talk a little bit about something. Your brand has basically been created from the need to create a social impact, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so you um, talking about political issues in Nigeria, um, social issues in Nigeria is part of what your brand was born from. So how um, do you find that balance? So for example, because it's political, do you find yourself in situations where you can't support either um, political party because you want to maintain your integrity or you want to maintain your um, your credibility with your audience? Because they know that Umadra is not just pro this party or pro that party. You will speak the truth. But how do you, when it comes to being able to monetize this um, <laughs> this passion mm -hmm. and all of that, how do you find the balance between... Um, Look, balance is overrated. Mm. Um, there are times when you cannot afford a balance. You have to take a position. Mm. So for me, I found myself in that place where I took that position. Mm. But the thing is to also, your audience has to trust you enough to take a stand if yeah. people that you've supported mm. are on a wrong footing or mm. are doing the wrong thing. Because your your primary source of trade online is believability. Mm. If you lose believability, it's gone. So, for instance, when I'm supporting someone, you would know, you know that, that you're I'm supporting, supporting the person. person. I'm not going to be I like stand by it no matter what. And I'm ready for the cost. And there are always costs to that. Mm. But the other thing is, I've also found a way to de-emphasize my my politics. Mm. So it's ha I, it's hard for you to look at me and say I'm strictly or political conversations it's 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 a buffet mm. i have conversations and all of these are all popular conversations my opinions on the culture whether it's music whether it's movies whether it's football they are all just as popular mm. as my political opinion in fact when i started out i realized that politics was never going to get people's attention mm. so what i did was to make people realize that i'm just exactly like them i want to have their kim kardashian conversations <laughs> i want to have their deban whiskey and david conversations and Genevieve and Omotala conversations mm. and then I put the, I, I wrap that around the politics so when you come and you're hearing all these things you want to hear you also get to hear 
the conscious conversations that need for us to have with and respect to how our country is led. led. So my risk has spread. I could wake up to, to say t- for the next one week, I'm not tweeting about, about a particular sector mm-hmm. and I'd be totally fine because people trust my voice on several mm-hmm. other aspects of the society. Let's now move to a few personal finance questions. Mm. So this show is all about money and we want to basically teach someone who is looking at Modra, who knows that 10 years ago, if a Modra went to his parents and said, you know what, I want to build a business around social media. They would have thought, What's huh? social media? What is that? <laughs> like, or I'm going to be a blogger, or I'm going to be commentating on um, politics on Twitter. They would have thought, you are not all right. <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, I want a younger version of you, yeah. or people who are looking at looking up to you to actually see like the, the monetization of this passion so let's start with when did you make your first one million naira and how i didn't make my first million in a book okay. this, this was like an accumulation i didn't realize i had made a million until i crossed it by almost four four times yeah. when i just woke up i was like how much do i even have <laughs> so i didn't wake up to it but the, the really the big moment was when at the, at the point I just finished from my NYSC, mm. I, I had not written out to, to seek for jobs because I was too like thinking, is can I really like get this thing started immediately? I, mm. I knew that I was going to do something with it, but I didn't think that it could really pick up immediately. Mm. But someone, a friend's dad had asked me to send my CV. He wanted to get me to an advertising company, one I really would have loved to work yeah. in because I love, I still love advertising. Then about the same time, someone sends an email about a financial institution wanting to run a campaign uh, for four weeks. I quoted an amount in USD, in, mm. in US dollars, and they said, can I like put it in in Naira? I, yeah. I sent it back in Naira. They were like, okay, this is like, like a little bit too much. Mm. Can we do it? So they reduced the duration of the campaign and they reduced the amount by like 20%. Okay. But even at that, I was like, whoa, whoa for real? <laughs> Like, for real, I'm just going to be posting this thing on Twitter and they are really going to pay this so amount. You, so you are basically living your dream. You could literally be in your pajamas and tweeting. I don't even have to tweet uh, exactly. it anymore. I just program it and just go on a trip. It's so that beautiful. That is amazing. It's so beautiful. That, like is so, that is so amazing. <laughs> so understand, so I find it interesting that obviously you are interested in advertising. What a lot of people don't realize is that because we've been able to build personal brands on social media, we become advertising platforms ourselves, mm-hmm. so that you can now monetize your. Um, you your can monetize media everything. Platform. You can monetize your shoes. You can mm. monetize your cap. You can monetize your watch. Mm-hmm. You can monetize a football Just team. In 2012, you. I made money. I, I made some money from the African Nations Cup, mm-hmm. the World Cup. You can monetize events. Because you can basically, and, like, and this is what the, I need the audience to understand. Omodua talks about things he's passionate about and accumulation of all those things make up his personal brand so football politics and all the other like social Music. issues that he likes to talk about and so when he's because he talks so loudly and he has a strong voice when it comes to those topics brands see that and say oh you know what actually FIFA needs to do xyz or module might be one of the influencers that we need to um, engage so that we can get traction Mm -hmm. in this area so we become advertising you know platforms ourselves and i think it's such a magical you know magical thing so let's talk about your biggest um money mistake so what thing you've done with your money that you're just like oh god okay i think really that would be putting everything together so i i give i give money out Mm -hmm. a lot like and i don't it's really difficult to control it because I mm. feel very sad when I cannot help someone, especially if I have to mm. give. But the mistake was that the money that I was giving out and the money, they were all in the same, same. account. My, my, so my you're mixing your account. business finances with your personal finances. Everything was finances. just together. And I didn't like, I didn't think about it. And I think mm. that really was a mess. Yeah. And I think you know, a lot of this back. happens to a lot of people because you mix your business finances with your personal finances and all of a sudden you, you think you can afford certain things. Yeah, you, you can't exactly. Actually, it was an illusion. You know, afford exactly. There really were times I had no business sending those monies out mm. because I was like chipping into the company's mm. earnings. But well, what stuff. could help is setting a budget for yourself. First of all, separating it and then setting a giving budget. Trust me, budget. everything has been separated. <laughs> yes. Now, 
money going out is from the Omojua Foundation. Mm. I'm not even from my personal account. That. And then there's also the company's account. So mm. everything is fully separated. Separated now. so that you can do all the things you want to do. You can if Omojua Foundation doesn't does have, have money, money, I don't have know. Money to <laughs> Fair enough. So what's the biggest um like your soul money moment? Like the biggest thing that maybe you put your money in and it did so well or a deal that you did that you know was fantastic and you got a lot of like returns from it i, I bet on my mind mm, i i bet on I my love mind that. i tweetable <laughs> <laughs> i i invested a lot i continue to invest a lot on my mind mm. because i feel like every industry is ephemeral especially if it's an industry where it's about creativity and mm. the culture music movies social media influencing people mm. disappear really quickly so you need to have something that continues that to refresh you your reality and your brand so i think really and truly if i if i give you a different answer from this i'd be lying <laughs> so basically you make i an bet investment on my mind yourself. and i continue I to do so so the not too young to run bill was passed recently and we know now that we don't need to wait till they've given us just two options to pick from and we have to be waiting you know for to pick the lesser of two evils we need to get in the game earlier so this is a great thing for a lot of young people who want to get into politics but the reality is politics is an expensive hobby so what kind of strategy would you um encourage other people to sort of employ that want to get into politics look i don't think i want to come on tv and be empowering people that might use the same <laughs> knowledge against me because look who says i might not even get into politics uh -uh. tomorrow I would um, but, I'd, but I'd say something though. Um, I feel like the best way to get into the system is via an appointment. Mm. Because that way you get two big things, at least one big thing uh, being appointed. You get a chance to show that I can actually do, do the work. this thing. I can, I can be in public service and do mm -hmm. this work very, very well. People don't get to ask too many questions about your pedigree because it's really like active reality. Mm. And then you can transit from there. And I've seen people do that. The other way is really quite expensive. People have done it, but in Nigeria, it's even much more expensive, which is to come from I mean, your private God life Father. to now spend loads of money. You you basically have to like buy things that you would have had naturally mm. by being by being in public office. But mm. having said that, there is no one way road to the market. There are different and, and politics is a mm. market. There are different ways, different rules, different ways to it. And I feel like those that want to do it have a responsibility to do the research and ask the questions and hire the strategists <laughs> and hire to the strategists to do it. So final question, mm. Omodra. We ask all our guests this: If you hammered one billion naira today, mm. how do you spend it? How do you invest it? I mean, one billion. I don't consider one billion naira as a hammer because it's just like okay. three million dollars. Okay. That's not a lot of money. But how am I going to spend that? I'm very, very interested in the media. So Ooh. I definitely will set up an integrated media platform that would inc inculcate digital publishing, regular publishing, music publishing, Ooh. and the likes. Definitely will do something like that. Um, a sizable amount, maybe 10% will go to the Omojua Foundation. That, that would help with grants and very, very subtle loans, 0%, 1% loans for entre entrepreneurs, especially businesses that are very capable of of a scaling impact, um, yeah. a sizable amount to those i'll be I, I, i'd like to be a venture capitalist so i would use a sizable amount of it maybe one third of it to invest in some very powerful businesses and i'll be looking around the world not just the, the local Nigeria. market don't don't forget that a part of it was already for charity yes. 10%. <laughs> and then maybe the last part would definitely be into production farming and post-production in terms mm. of adding value to what like has been farmed. Yeah, also. I don't think really to go beyond. And of course, a sizable amount to go into my person. I'm very, very big on investing in my mind. So I'd probably have to pay some people that I've always respected and say, OK, yeah. come, come and tell come me how did you do this particular <laughs> thing. I love stuff. it. That's how it's going to go down. I love it. I think we should call this episode an investment in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much my for coming love, on the show. I love sitting like, now with you. You're so cool. <laughs> Thank you. I had so much fun and I'm sure the audience needs to learn I so much it. from this I episode. It. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's hard to expand my business. You know, many farmers depend on me. All these banks say they don't see my vision. Sorry for interrupting. That's not exactly true. Just last year, I had planned to expand my hospitality business. It was tough, but I met the right people. Who exactly are these people? My bank. 
FCMB. With the right people who believe in your visions, getting to your desired destination is easier and quicker. Let's help you take the next step. FCMB, my bank and I. I have to say, I really love that episode with Omojoa. It was very insightful. My three takeaways from the episode were one, invest in your mind. Omojoa talked a lot about how he invested in his mind and his skill set so that he could become the master of his craft and that has helped him make more money. Number two, don't sell your votes, guys. Get your PVC and vote for the leaders who are going to be running the economy tomorrow because your Political decisions today have long-term effects on your personal finances. The leaders that you pick, if they can't run the economy properly, it's going to affect your jobs and it's going to affect your businesses. The third takeaway that I got from this episode was authenticity. It's important for you to be your most authentic self. Omojoa has created an entire career and businesses around the fact that he's using his voice in the most authentic way. He's talking about things he's passionate about, politics, football, social issues, and he's been able to get brands to pay him for it. So we have to recognize that our voices, especially today on social media even, are very powerful and we need to learn how to use it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.